Alright, in this video we'll be looking at polynomials and polynomial functions. So first of all I want to start with the definition. A term is a constant, a variable, or a product of both. Of course, product means we're going to multiply. So a constant would be a number like 3. It's got a fixed value. Or variable, we normally in algebra will let x represent a value that is unknown. We call it a variable. Or a product of both, so something like negative 3xy squared. So that would be an example of a term. So what we have here is products. So this would be one term, we call it a monomial. And basically, um, a monomial is going to be similar to a term except for the exponents have to be nice whole numbers. Numbers like 2, 3, 4, 1. Um, so this has two terms. Notice terms are separated by a plus or a minus sign. So this is what we call a binomial since it has two terms. Of course that would make this a trinomial. There is no special name for this last one here with four terms. Um, however, we would normally write the highest power first, so 7x to the fourth, and then the minus 4x cubed plus 3x and plus 4. Notice the exponents go down as we go from left to right. We say this is written in descending order. And that's the way we normally want to write our answers when we're working with polynomials. Now before we go any further I want to point out for example with 2x squared minus 3x plus 1 of course, this is our trinomial, so we have three terms. We call this term the leading term, and it's called that because this term has the highest degree of all these three terms, so we call it the leading term. Notice this, so we would say this term has a degree of 2. Notice the degree is just the exponent of the term. So this term, this x is to the first power, but we don't write the 1. And so um, this would be a first degree term. And then finally, constants have a degree of 0. So for a polynomial, the leading term is the term of highest degree. The degree of a polynomial is the degree of its leading term. So this trinomial has a degree of 2 because its leading term has a degree of 2. Alright, so there are four problems for you to do here in problem 1. It says find the degree of each of the following polynomials. So if you want, you can Go ahead and do those and stop the video and then watch it. Alright, so this term has a degree of 1. We said a constant has a degree of 0. Notice this is a binomial. And so this is a bino or I'm sorry, yeah, binomial with a degree of 1. Notice here our leading term is x squared, which has a degree of 2. So the whole polynomial has a degree of 2. Here our leading term is x cubed, which has a degree of 3, and so this binomial has a degree of 3. Now notice here, this one's not written, I should just put it this way. This is our leading term, it's not the order that matters, it's the term of greatest degree, and that would be this term here. Now if you wanted to, you could write this in descending order. But the main thing is to know this polynomial has a degree of 5. 
So it's this term here that determines the degree. All right, let's move on to number two. So it says evaluate each polynomial function for the given values of the variable. So before I go any further, I just want to say we've worked with polynomials up to this point. We just never really called them that. So we're just looking at the language of polynomials and there's just some basic things that we're wanting you to make sure, wanted to make sure that you know when we're talking about polynomials. Just the vocabulary that we use. So this is what we would call a polynomial function. Notice they're using p of x instead of f of x and I think that's just to emphasize the fact we're dealing with polynomials. And we know how to um, evaluate a function for given inputs. So we're just doing the same thing here. We've done this before. P of 0. We're going to replace each of our x's with 0 here. And so this is 0 minus 0, which of course is 0. P of 4. So again, let's go ahead and make a shell or a skeleton for the function. And we're replacing the x's with 4. So this is going to be, now be careful here, you've got to square the 4 first using the order of operations. So 4 squared is 16 times 2 is 32 minus 20, so we're going to get 12. Alright, and the last one, p of negative 3, if you haven't already tried it, you might want to go ahead and stop the video and give it a shot. So we've replaced all our x's with negative 3. When you square any number, you're always going to get a positive. Negative 3 times negative 3, we get 9 times 2, which is 18. And this will be plus 15. And so we're going to get 33. Now notice on the next one, p of 0, well, wherever there's an x, those terms are going to 0 out because 0 times anything is 0. And notice you're just going to end up with negative 7. I'll go ahead and plug in the numbers, but this is, anytime you're uh, evaluating for 0, normally it, it's pretty simple as far as the math is concerned. So again, we'll get negative 7 here. And one last one, p of negative 1. So again, let's make a skeleton. And we can plug in our negative 1. And we get, let's see, when you cube negative 1, you get negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. Here you're squaring negative 1. That's 1 times a minus 5. That'll be minus 5. This will be minus 2 and minus 7. So 2 minus, negative 2 minus 5, that's negative 7. And another negative 2 is negative 9 and a minus 7, so we'll get negative 16. Now, you certainly ought to be able to do this by hand, but on the other hand, you should also be able to put this into a calculator. In fact, you can use the parentheses and it'll look just like it looks here, but you should be able to do it with or without a calculator. Now, when you get to a problem like number 3, where we're doing a word problem, the numbers normally aren't as nice, and so it makes a lot of sense to use your calculator and save yourself some time. So it says a firm determines that the total cost in dollars, so C of X here is cost, of producing X pairs of sunglasses. So X is actually the, the number of pairs of sunglasses. So basically those are our two variables. C of X is the cost and x is the number of pairs of sunglasses. Alright, so it says what is the total cost of producing 50 pairs of sunglasses? Well, that's telling us our x value here. It's 50, and we're looking for the cost, that's c of x. In this case, our input is 50. So we're just finding C of 50, which is the cost 
when we produce 50 pairs of sunglasses. So it will be 5,000 plus 0 0.4 times 50 squared. And when you plug that into your calculator, you should get $6,000. Now notice that's how much it costs you to, uh, to produce 50 pairs of sunglasses. If you divided 6,000 by 50, that would actually tell you the cost of each pair, or at least how much, what your cost of producing that pair of sunglasses. And obviously you would want to sell it for a lot more than that. All right, so let's move on to the next page last page. So next we're going to look at simplifying, adding, subtracting polynomials. Terms are separated by plus and minus signs. We talked about that before. Like terms are terms that have the same variable factors. Basically the same variables to the same power. Like terms are combined or collected by adding the coefficients of the terms. The coefficient is just the number out front. So here the coefficient of this term is the 3. All right, so we're just adding 3 and negative 8 here to combine these two like terms. That's negative 5x. Notice here you have two like terms, your x squared terms, and then you have a constant term. And so negative 5x squared and 2x squared is negative 3x squared. And then don't forget to write the plus 7. And so that would be our solution there, our answer. On letter C, notice you have 12a and a minus 6a and a minus 1a. So 12 minus 6 is 6, minus 1 is 5. So we have 5a. And then notice we've got a minus 8 and plus 4, that's negative 4, plus 9, that's going to be plus 5. So we end up with 5a plus 5. All right, this last one, notice here we have a polynomial and two variables. Now we didn't discuss this, but in a case like this, the degree of this term would be found by adding the exponents here. So 2 plus 2 is 4. So the degree of this term is 4. What we really care about is the like terms. Notice these are like terms. 5 and negative 8 is negative 3. So negative 3x squared y squared. And then we do have some x cubed terms. 4 and negative 12 is negative 8. We'll write minus 8x cubed. All right, number five. Notice it says to add polynomials, drop the parentheses and combine the like terms. We've done this before. We just never really thought of them as polynomials. And we tended to do stuff like this, some smaller polynomials. Here we have a binomial plus a binomial, which we've seen before. So Notice what it says, drop the parentheses. Well, this is a 1. It's understood to be a 1, and so is this. And 1 times anything is itself. So again, we don't really need the parentheses with addition of polynomials. And then we'll add our like terms, just like we did up above. So we'll get 7x minus 2. So again, I would <clears throat> encourage you to do the next problem. In fact, you may even go on to number 6 and do those, and then check the um, answers there. All right, so here I'm going to go ahead and drop the parentheses. We have plus a minus x squared. We're just going to write that as minus 2x cubed. I'm sorry, that's cubed. And then we have plus x squared plus 11x minus 3. So notice none of the, the signs here change. Plus a negative is the same as subtraction. All right, so we have a 5x cubed and a minus 2x cubed, so that's 3x cubed. We've got a 4x squared and a 1x squared. I should say minus 4 and... 
Oh, I got that turned around. Let's see. So we have minus 4x squared and plus 1x squared. That's minus 3x squared. We've got a 7x and an 11x. That would be 18x. A minus 8 and a minus 3. That'll make minus 11. All right. Whoops. My screen went dark. I don't know if it did for you. Hopefully not. Let's look at number six. Let's move this. All right, so, and again, we've done this before. It says to subtract polynomials, you will need to distribute the negative to the polynomial subtracted. So again, this is a one, so we can drop the parentheses on the first uh, binomial here. But when we're subtracting this binomial here, we're going to have to distribute a negative. And what happens is each of our terms inside the parentheses will change signs. Negative 1 times 3x squared is negative 3x squared. We'll write minus 3x squared. Negative 1 times 5x is negative 5x, or minus 5x. Negative 1 times negative 4 is positive 4, and we'll write plus 4. But again, you can see each of the terms inside the parentheses have changed signs. All right, so now we're back to what we were doing before. We're going to add 1x squared and a minus 3x squared. That's a minus 2x squared. Now, you could put the constants next, but I'm going to go ahead and write this in descending order and put my x term next. So there's only one there. There's nothing to combine with the minus 5x. And then finally, we've got a minus 7 and a plus 4. That's minus 3. All right, last one. The first thing you should have done or should do is write the first one without parentheses, the first trinomial here. And then we're going to distribute this negative. It's going to become minus 4a minus 8b and plus 3c. And so now we can combine our a terms. 6 and a negative 4 is 2, so 2a. Two now I could put c next, but with variables like this, we normally put them in alphabetical order. So I'm going to go ahead and do my b terms next. So a negative 2b and a negative 8b would be a negative 10b or minus 10b. And finally, we've got our c terms, 1c and 3c going to be 4c. Alright, so that's it for our lesson on polynomials.